The city of Chasivya in the Donetsk region has become one of the centers of destruction of the Russian occupiers. This was reported today, October the 16th, on the air of the Freedom TV channel by General, former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, Mikhailo Malamuz. He noted that he maintains contact with the leaders of the 24th Separate Mechanized Brigade named after King Daniel. They are very strong there. This is a strong brigade, well prepared. A lot of preparation has been carried out in terms of strengthening capabilities, not only in terms of personnel, equipment, weapons, ammunition, especially drones. They were moved from New York when they held a position there. No one could advance, the general said. Malamuz noted that now the enemy is trying to bypass Chasivya from the flanks because they cannot take the city head on. The Russians were moving along the canals, entering there. But the guys zeroed in on all these points, and as soon as they enter, they unleash a barrage of fire there. And therefore, the destruction of a large number of manpower and equipment every day is very effective. Our drones are actively working, so they strike at the middle and immediate rear. This neutralizes new offensive operations, he said. According to Malamuz, there are fortifications in the city which enable the Ukrainian defense forces to defend themselves and deliver counter-attacks. I think that this is one of the centers for the destruction of a large number of enemy servicemen and equipment, the general said. The frontline area around Chasivya is no less difficult than the others. Chasivya has been out of the media spotlight for a long time. Currently, the Russians are trying to put pressure on Chasivya from at least four directions. These are frontal attacks on the town itself, noted Sahi Zaguretz, a Ukrainian military expert. According to the military expert in some areas, the Russian forces have crossed the Siversky Donetsk Canal, trying to amass forces beyond the canal, which is an obstacle to the Russian actions. But the Ukrainian military say they have enough ammunition for large caliber artillery. Sometimes the weather affects the use of FPV drones, emphasized Zaguretz. The military expert added that the occupying Russian army plans to advance into one of the western neighborhoods of Chasivya to establish a northern insertion into the city, but these movements are still being assessed. Systematic combat actions are currently underway to prevent the Russians from advancing to these areas, specifically to the town from the Siversky Donetsk Donbass Canal area to the northern outskirts of Chasivya, explained. Zaguretz. The term meat grinder is a widely used description of Russia's military strategy in its campaign to seize the Donbass, and this strategy, despite the enormous human cost is working. As the Times writes, even taking into account Russia's meat grinder strategy, the scale of losses among Russians in Donbass in recent months has become unprecedented. According to American intelligence, August and September were the bloodiest months of the war. More than 1,200 Russians were killed or wounded every day. However suicidal the strategy may be, it is not without effect. The Times notes, as Russia has gained territory in the past two months at a pace not seen since 2022, seizing 318 square miles, according to the intelligence agency Blackbird Group. As Andrei, a paratrooper from one of the airborne brigades defending the front line near Kurokovo, told the publication between 20 and 30 Russians are killed during daily sorties against his company's positions. The people they send on these raids are not real combat units and are poorly trained. Andre says, but it still depletes our ammunition supplies and every time one of our guys is either wounded or killed. He says that sometimes Russian soldiers manage to get into Ukrainian territory and hide and then Ukrainian armed forces have to spend time searching for and eliminating them. The purpose of all this is to exhaust our resources and distract attention. It's crude, but it works. Two weeks ago, they managed to advance 500 meters, he said. Potential collaborators who may remain among local residents also pose a danger. Almost all the locals I met support us, but we have to constantly move our positions because there are those who give coordinates to the Russians, says Nazar Voitenkov, a press officer for the 79th Brigade. Ukrainian military analyst Kostyantin Mashovets examines the overall situation on the front line where Russia has managed to achieve tactical progress at the expense of intense loss of human life in meat grinder assaults and suggests a way forward. Ukraine's command should focus on improving the quality of artillery and above all, infantry.
The Middle East is on the brink of a regional war with the conflict between Israel and Hamas marking one year on October the 7th. The longer the war lasts, especially in long-standing geopolitical flashpoints, the more likely it is to spill over not only into military conflicts, but also into hybrid wars where political, strategic and economic interests intersect. Russia's war against Ukraine is an example of what the Middle East may be facing, writes Foreign Policy. While Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 captured global attention, the conflict began earlier with the 2014 euro maidan revolution, the annexation of Crimea, and Russia's support for separatists in eastern Ukraine. International efforts to resolve the conflict have failed, leading to tensions escalating into a full-scale war. The hybrid dimension of this conflict has become a key aspect, covering everything from sanctions and cyber attacks to a proxy war between Moscow and Kiev that extends far beyond Europe. The sanctions imposed by the US and EU against Russia have become an important means of pressuring Moscow without direct military intervention. The West has imposed thousands of sanctions on individuals, companies and sectors, particularly in the banking and energy sectors. Secondary sanctions against countries and companies cooperating with Russia are used to limit circumvention schemes. For example, banks in Kyrgyzstan cooperate with Russian institutions in violation of sanctions, which threatens the country with isolation. Cyber attacks have become a tool for both Ukraine and Russia, targeting critical infrastructure and government institutions. Proxy conflicts have also spread to the Middle East and Africa, where Russia and Ukraine support different forces such as in Sudan and Mali. All this highlights the potential for conflicts in regions such as the Middle East to become hybrid, involving multiple players and interests. A prolonged conflict risks attracting in new players and further economic and strategic consequences. Recall Hezbollah's acting leader declared that the Lebanese militant group is focused on hurting the enemy by targeting Haifa and other parts of Israel, including Tel Aviv. Sheikh Naim Qasem, Hezbollah's deputy chief vowed in a televised speech to defeat our enemies and drive them out of our lands. It was his third appearance since Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah was killed in an Israeli airstrike in a southern suburb of Beirut.